Welcome back to Squawk on the Street and Tuesday's rendition of the Santelli Exchange. If you want something fixed, whether it's in the private sector or, more importantly, in the government sector, there always has to be incentives. Everything's about incentives. Capitalism is a great incentive. But sometimes, without incentives, large issues either go unnoticed or totally unfixed. I'll give you one of my opinions in this regard. That's the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, by keeping interest rates low, removes a huge incentive for politicians to deal with problems. Yesterday we had my buddy Art Nolan on. He said the grand bargain a couple years ago never happened. And in his opinion, and I agree with it, part of the reason is, is because with low interest rates, there isn't this climactic epilogue to an issue to address it. Now, when you think about employment and unemployment and U6, we all know that by looking at things like the labor force participation rate, there's a huge swath of America that's not counted as unemployed. Now, think incentives. We're going to go to something I found great and in an unusual place for me as well. NPR Planet Money wrote an article a couple of days ago called Unfit to Work, Unfit for Work. And what it's about is people on disability. Now, we've heard this. You know, anybody who's watched Larry Kudlow's done a great job. Disabilities are on the rise. But here's some aspects brought up in this article that just make you grind your teeth, okay? There's about 14 million people that are on disability right now. And how many of these people are counted in the ranks of the unemployed, you ask? Zero. Zero. So where's the incentive to address this? Okay, we need to put them above the radar screen. Now, in this article, they concentrated the first half on an area, Hale County, Alabama, where one in four working age adults are on disability. And it isn't just a problem for people that are older, although that's part of it. Most of these stories that are being recanted in this article are 18 to 64 year olds, not in retirement. And it's really portrayed as another welfare program. But it isn't exactly the same. First of all, if you look at minimum wage, you basically can come up with about a $15,000 a year income on minimum wage. If you look at the disability program, it's about 13,000. But here's the wild card. On 13,000, you get health insurance. Yes, you get health insurance. And that whole program costs just shy of $300 billion a year. And if you look at the research in this article, and this is the final point, anybody who is in the disability programs as of the first quarter of 2011, how many of them have moved out of the program? less than one percent this is something we need to address i'm not saying there aren't people that are on disability that shouldn't be but much of it is illnesses like back pain mental illness but it's a judgment call the doctor in this article you know the first question he asks do you have a college degree because if you don't most of the time you're going to be on your feet for a job we have to do better melissa lee back to you